Welcome to everybody and the celebration of Lady Di's life. I want to thank everybody for their prayers, all of their best wishes, and all of their support. It has been absolutely fantastic. I want to thank the Finley family. I want to thank Jen and Shatana and RJ and all the, the uh, staff at Black Rock. They also have been such a support to the both of us and our family. Um, I don't think it can be any better than what it is up here. I want to thank the Black Rock community also for all of your gifts of cards, of videos, of text messages, and sending all your love to Lady Di. It has absolutely been unmatchable, I don't think, anywhere. And it meant a lot to her and I. I want to thank you for that. I also want to thank the horse community because Lady Di kind of led, she was part of this life and part of that life. And they, the same, were so supportive. It was just unbelievable. And I want to thank you for that. At this time, I would like to thank Morgan for her unbelievable work that she has put into this. She's put a team around her, and it has, she has made this what you are going to see which I think is going to be one of the best celebrations of life you have ever seen on screen. It is just fabulous. And she deserves all of the efforts that have gone into that. At this time, I would like to introduce family members. Uh, Lee, uh, that is uh, Lady Di's brother. Where's Lee? Thank you for standing up. And um, Ashlyn, this is uh, Scott's. Um, daughter, and where's uh, and then Ken and Nancy, uh, and Josh and Jacob. That is Nancy is her sister. They kind of look alike a little bit. Um, and then I would also like to say hello to the Nelson family streaming live, which is Drew, which is uh, Ashlyn's husband, and then Scott and Faye, and Scott is the brother and Garden, Dor Gordon and Darlene, who are sitting, and they're all sitting in Lakota, North Dakota, watching this, and we say hello to them and, and wish them the best. Um, I would like to introduce my family. Um, I'd start off with my brother Kevin and his wife Judy over here. I got my, my son Charlie and Kinsey, they're here. And then I have my daughter, Christina, and her husband Jason, and then there's Charlie, Maxwell, Sammy, and Kennedy. Um, I also would like to at least say hello to uh, my other parts of my family. My younger brother Blair, my older brother Gary and his wife. Um, they are also watching this live, so I, I thank them for that. Um, one of the things that when you are watching the, the slideshow and video, I want to tell you this little story because it has a lot to do with what's going to happen at the very end. Um, Lady Di, through all of her, ever since her diagnosis and her surgery, her radiation, and uh, all of the infusions, her clinical studies, everything, um, she absolutely was so positive in her affirmations of God and what God was going to do. And she always said after every doctor's appointment, everything, she would always say, God has this. And he's going to let me know, and then I'm going to ride into heaven. And I, as you're watching this last part of this video, I want you to think about that. The video was found and was, was um, videoed about two plus years ago, and it puts everything in perspective for Lady Di's life. And at this point, I would like to introduce Mark Wickstrom, who is going, he is our pastor, and now he's retired in Las Vegas at Community Lutheran Church. And he is retired up in northern Minnesota, and he agreed to come down and do the service. So Mark, it's all yours.
At Community Lutheran, we always practice the call response. So I'm going to say good afternoon and invite you to say good afternoon back. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And this is going to be a celebration of Diane's life. If you have a cell phone or pager, if you'd be kind enough to turn it to the off or vibrate position, that would be greatly appreciated. We don't want anybody thinking they're getting a call from Diane. <laughs> We're going to be using several different lenses as we look at Diane's life today. The first lens is going to be scriptures that inspired her faith throughout her life. The second is going to be the prayers that were a part of giving her a sense of calm and comfort as she lived her life. We're also going to be listening to live witness accounts. All of us have our own, but these folks are going to share theirs and give us a picture of Diane as they've experienced her. And finally, we're going to have some technological uh, wizardry as we see her life on camera. So that's going to be very cool. We're delighted that you're here today. We pray God has a special blessing for you as we celebrate your life. Does everybody have a worship folder? Would you raise your hand if you don't? Uh, share. If you would get one, that would be great. And I'm going to invite you to stand as you are able. I'll read the part that says Pastor Mark, and we'll all read the part that says all. We've gathered here today to celebrate the life of Diane Nelson Kosnick. We gather in the presence of God who created Diane. We gather in gratitude to Jesus the Son who redeemed Diane, and in the power of the Holy Spirit who enabled Diane to live her life of faith. Amen. You may be seated. And now let's take some time to reflect on her life as witnessed by some who lived it with her. Good afternoon. I just want to echo a few of the comments uh, that Kazi said from her family. On behalf of our family, we would like to thank the Black Rock community and all of the family and friends for the outpouring of love and support you have all shown Diane and Kaz. We have been tremendously moved as we have witnessed endless acts of kindness. There have been so many examples of this, whether it was sitting by her side for treatments, taking care of her horses, providing meals, or driving Di to her appointments, whether that was a doctor appointment or a manicure pedicure. Can't thank you enough. We, as her family, spread across the country, cannot thank you for what you have done. We are beyond grateful. We would now like to share a few thoughts on behalf of our parents, Gordon and Darlene, who are attending virtually today, along with our brother Scott, spouses, nieces, and nephews. In the words of our parents, Diane, as their firstborn, has, and always will be, their baby die. Our dad put Diane on the back of a horse before the age of two, and thus her deep love of horses began. On her fourth birthday, our parents surprised her with her very own pony. They recount the day vividly. They had just come home from church, and Di was adorned in a white satin birthday dress, white patent shoes, a big hat, white gloves, I think we can uh, obviously see where Diane's obsession with, with fashion uh, came from. Our parents simply couldn't wait to give her their gift. Dad led Toby around the corner, and it was love at first sight. Toby was a one-year-old Shetland pony that Dad chose on the advice of a friend who said, it is always best if the pony and the little girl grow together. As it turns out, Toby was wildly independent and quite foxy in nature. Interestingly, our parents saw those same traits in their baby die. To this day, they say it was the best $125 that they ever spent. Because it encouraged her passions, it developed her work ethic, 
and it ultimately just made their little girl happy. A couple other things some of you may not know is that Di began to play piano at a very young age, which instilled a love of music that she embraced her whole life. She became an accomplished pianist, which allowed her to think more deeply, to feel more authentically, and to experience her faith more wholly. Now, some of you may be shocked to hear that Di was also an accomplished athlete. She played on the famed Lakota High School basketball team that made it to the 1977 North Dakota State Championship Tournament. We won't talk about how many minutes she actually played, but it was here that Diane's gift of encouraging and supporting others flourished. In the words of our parents, Dai was fiercely independent, a risk taker, and overwhelmingly successful at whatever she put her mind to. She was a trailblazer in every sense of the word. As her siblings, we have always marveled at Dai's amazing ability to make every person she encountered feel like the absolute center of the universe. This was one of her greatest gifts. She made every single person feel appreciated, accepted, and loved. Di truly believed in the importance of being present in the moment. She listened with intent, encouraged with absolute positivity, and always led with grace. Di was and continues to be a radiant light in all of our lives. Her unshakable faith and sphere of influence is unending. She had this uncanny ability to quietly and deeply influence each of us to look inward, trust, and have faith in the unknown. She even persuaded us to do things we didn't necessarily maybe even want to do. For example, our brother Scott shares that he never really liked riding horses, yet always seemed to find himself on one with his big sister by his side. And the crazy thing is, Di actually made Scott believe he did like writing. <laughs> Kazi, we think you may know a little bit about what that's like too. Maybe you can relate. What a beautiful example of how Di was able to lead others down unknown paths, to find joy and perhaps even a new perspective. And through her gentle influence, she brought countless people to faith on the back of a horse. Dai taught all of us what it means to lead a life filled with grace and gratitude. Grace isn't something you earn or you can buy. It is simply there, surrounding us whether we want it or not. Grace is acceptance and forgiveness. Grace is indeed amazing. Gratitude is a choice that each of us can choose to give or withhold. When gratitude is freely given, one spreads light, hope, and joy. Diane is both grace and gratitude personified. In the eyes of her nieces and nephews, Auntie Di Di was simply the best. The kids say it is impossible to have a bad day when you are with Auntie Di Di. She is the definition of fun. And talking with each of them, it was obvious she inspired their hearts and minds with the following values. Auntie Di Di's inexhaustible positivity inspires them to be a better version of themselves and motivates them to overcome their obstacles with their attitudes. Auntie Di Di never had a bad day. Her courage and bravery throughout her life, but especially at the end, taught them the importance of an unwavering faith. She shared with each of them her faith journey and became a spiritual guide leading them to God again and again. Her generosity of spirit has provided a safe and trusting haven for our children to grow. It has taught each of them to love others in both words and actions. Through her hugs and her smiles, they felt comfort, overwhelming peace, and God's unconditional love. Dai's legacy lives on in each of them and in all of us. We will see her in our actions of kindness and humility. 
We will hear her in our laughter and our joy. We will feel her presence when we give grace and gratitude. Di, we are, fortunate, we are the fortunate ones who knew you. Who love you to the moon and back. Whose lives will forever be divided into a before and an after. All because of you. invite you to stand again. Jesus said, I have come to give you life and give it abundantly. Diane lived a full and abundant life. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I haven't worn a lot of cowboy boots, but at least I didn't slip walking up here, so that was all good. You guys can give me some lessons later. Um, an incredible honor today uh, to talk about this beautiful and exceptional woman. Um, I love you and thank you. These are words that I remember from when I first met her um, three years ago to uh, just in the last few weeks and a few days before she died. We lost an earthly angel for a heavenly one. Many of us that have faith know that Di is in a much better place. Scripture promises us that there's no sting in death. But there's a lot of hurt and there's a lot of loss. And the reason that is is because life is just not as good without this person in it. I love you and thank you. As her oncologist, these are words I frequently heard in clinic. Exceptional, one of a kind patient. I left our visits feeling inspired and energized. <clears throat> I left our visits feeling like she gave me more than I gave her. How do you do this when you're fighting such a terrible disease? Life expectancy for glioblastoma is about 12 months. It's a terrible, terrible disease. Well, Lady Di blew away the odds, as I expect she did, in most things in her life. <clears throat> Likely, largely because of this attitude, this attitude and life of gratitude, this attitude of perseverance. I love you and thank you, she would frequently say. There were victories along the way when she had response to treatment where things were working, and there were celebrations. And then there were failures and things weren't working and things were going badly. <clears throat> when things go badly, that's when you really know somebody's true fiber. That's when you know their true values. It was remarkable because every time there was bad news, there would maybe be about a 15 second pause or a sigh and then Lady Di would say, okay, what's next? Pushing on, moving forward. An attitude of incredible optimism and resilience. What took her 30 seconds takes most patients, and rightfully so, I think a day or a week or a month, and some people never quite get there, but she was able to transition and again be positive and inspiring. I love you and thank you. During our medical journey, the piece I think I found most interesting is in the last uh, few weeks of Lady Di's life, she became more and more aphasic, and she was unable to translate her thoughts into words and into sentences. The tumor, the cancer, it did that. It took away her language center and her ability to speak and translate her thoughts into words. I was um, sitting a few days before she passed away with Kaz and, and Lady Di, and <clears throat> it was wonderful moments. I actually didn't put this in the speech because it made me cry every time I tried to say it. But I would sit there with her and she'd try to say something. She'd look up at the sky and she'd kind of shrug and she'd giggle a little bit. 
shrug her shoulders, and then she would say, I th thank you, I love you, thank you. I have to believe that those words were coming from somewhere else. They weren't coming from her CNS, they weren't coming from brain activity, because they couldn't. She was aphasic. <clears throat> Those words were coming from her heart, they were coming from her soul. I think this is remarkable inspiration and a lesson to all of us, how we live our lives, how we speak to each other, the words we use because it's what we become. So I encourage all of us when we're feeling hurt and we're feeling loss, remember how she lived. Remember how she spoke to us. Remember how she treated us. We'll all be better for that. <clears throat> so in closing, with all that being said, maybe we can, how, how do you say it? Congregation can say it back. Lady Di, we love you and we thank you. Lady Di, we love you and we thank you. Please stand again as you are able. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, even though she dies, Yet shall she live. Diane believed in Jesus and the resurrection. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Di was a monumental figure in my life. We had a lot in common, the two most obvious things being we were both completely horse crazy and were married to cosmic men. Um, but she was a mom to me on many levels. She guided and nurtured, she directed and loved. She was a big sister, giving me the good advice that I needed to hear and celebrating every success or sorrow, big and small. And she was a treasured friend capable of scooping Charlie and our children up <laughs> into her entire being and making us feel beyond loved. When she was diagnosed with the parasite, Di came up with four words to arm herself going into her treatment journey. We made them into a necklace that she wore for some of her treatments and we hung them in the barn. She called where she was going spiritual warfare and she wanted an army of mental fortitude on her side. She chose the words courageous, epic, fierce, and grit. She certainly was courageous. She was stronger and braver than anyone I have ever met all the way to the very end. She was also courageous in life. She chose what was right, not what was easy. She empowered us all to be better, to live better, to do the good work. Her journey was certainly epic. She battled this parasite and won, in my opinion. I mean, she crossed all of the boundaries of statistics and percentages, like David said, and shattered the glass ceiling in her clinical trials. And Dave, Lady Di definitely lived an epic life. She helped to create and run large companies. She found the love of her life and created her dream life with him. She built a foundation with her beloved horses, she served on multiple boards, and she finally found her lifelong dream at the Rock and K. And still somehow, she managed to find the time to make all of us feel extremely important and forever loved. And man, was she fierce, right? She showed a powerful and heartfelt intensity for those that she loved. Family was everything to Lady Di, her husband, her parents, her siblings, her children, her grandchildren, her nieces and nephews, her community, her friends. She was fiercely loyal. She protected all of us during these last three years, always showing us the positive, always giving God the glory. 
always the mama bear, our leader, our guide. My favorite word on the planet, Di's fourth word, is grit. I believe that Lady Di's grit was her faith. I have never seen faith like Diane's. She never faltered, she never broke. She stood steadfast. The line was drawn and she didn't flinch. She put her cowgirl boots on and she showed up every time. And even when she fell off the horse in battle, she got back on. In Life Die led me to my own path in faith, as I know she did many of you. Faith has been a pillar of strength in Dai's life that has been remarkable and uncompromising. Lady Dai's faith is a beacon in my life. It is a constant reminder to look up. And she handled all of this, this whole life, every moment in her beautiful life with the utmost grace. Whenever you are in her presence, you feel heard, valued, and loved. Like Nance said, sometimes you don't even know she's getting you to do something or see something from a new perspective because she finesses it with such grace. She had a really good set of spurs, but she certainly didn't need them in life. She danced her way through it with bells on. That was her angel dust. That's her superpower, love and grace. I will miss her more than I can truly comprehend. But I know that she is looking down on us and beaming. I know she is proud. And I'm sure she has told every single person in heaven that she loves them. <laughs> and she means it. And in her own words, if my time comes sooner than I'd like, I want you to know my heaven. Think of me on our ranch with my boys, smiling down at you in all of God's glory, peaceful, beyond happy, and full of grace. Uh, uh, Di had a saying, how lucky are we? She said it in the big moments. But more importantly, she said it in the small moments. We would just be sitting around the fire pit having cocktails on their deck, and she would out of nowhere pause and say, how lucky are we? But for her, it wasn't out of nowhere. She lived her life with this viewpoint of gratitude. She lived each moment feeling blessed to be right where she was. Even in moments facing the ultimate darkness where most people would crumble, she saw light and said, how lucky are we? I know that I want to honor her and carry on that light and torch by living my life with that viewpoint of how lucky are we. I also know that I will stumble because that path she walked was not easy. But when I stumble, I know Lady Di will be looking down, telling me not to be discouraged, but to keep trying, keep having faith. And how lucky are we that we have the opportunity to get back up and be better. When I was sitting by her bed at the end, I had a little talk with God. And I told him that he better get used to that saying, be a part of his daily vocabulary, because he was getting someone super special. And I know he was going to feel the same gratitude for having Lady die around that we did. So as we celebrate her life and her profound impact she had in our lives, <laughs> I want to acknowledge how lucky are we to have known her as a colleague or a mentor. How lucky are we to have known her as a friend? How lucky are we to have known her as a family, as a wife, as a sister, as a daughter, as a mom? How lucky are we? And now we get to have her as our angel, guiding us, and inspiring us, and letting us know that there will always be light and love and God. How lucky are we? I invite you to stand again as you are able. 
Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. Diane has entered the mansion God prepared for her. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Gordon and Darlene, I have to start by thanking you. You two raised four fabulous humans, and your family shaped the amazing woman that we're celebrating today. And I hope you know how very much we love your Diane. My story with Di actually starts with Woody and Kaz. They knew each other as boys growing up in Robbinsdale, Minnesota, seven houses away from each other. In 1996, 30-some-odd years after going their separate ways, we built a house that just happened to be seven houses away from Cause and Die. Our friendship was instant and intense. Now, on the surface, Die and I may look like an unlikely pair. A lot of times, I would liken us to Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie Twins. Just so you know, I was the Danny DeVito in that relationship. We married our Robbinsdale boys within months of each other. Kaz and Woody share the same birthday. She became part of our family, and we became part of hers. We shared countless adventures in the 25 years since, and all along the way, does this sound familiar? She challenged me to be a better person. She led by example. One of her favorite Bible verses describes her for a t to a T. It's Romans 12:12. 12, 12. Be joyful in hope patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. We all saw her live that verse out loud in bright, bold colors. Now, there are so many things that Di did better than anyone else, and you've heard about a lot of them already. So I pardon the repeat, but this was one consistent person. The word that probably comes up most about her is light. She would light up a room. You could not miss this woman's entrance. Now, she didn't have to announce her arrival, but she often did. Hey, guys, I'm here. She was radiant, and she radiated this beautiful, bright light. And Diane did not simply exist. She lived every moment. Every single moment was an adventure, and she never failed to recognize the blessings in every one, large or small, quiet or crazy. As a matter of fact, in her calendar, on her phone, every single day, the same reminder would show up. Joy, positivity, and purpose. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity in the gift of each new day. Her life was fueled by her faith, and she gave God the glory for everything. Life was precious to die way before it was forced to be. Love. Di had a greater capacity for love than anybody on the planet. There are not words to describe how deeply and completely she loved Kaz. Same goes for her family and her glory land, the rockin' K and her horses. And she loved her friends, all of us. You know, it's been said that you might forget what a person said or you might forget what a person did, but you will never forget the way somebody made you feel. And Di made you feel loved. No one that she encountered when unseen, unappreciated, or unloved. Just ask the guy at the meat counter at Fred Meyer. I'm pretty sure he misinterpreted the I love you that he got in exchange for some sliced turkey. <laughs> but she truly saw and appreciated him and everybody she met. She could also laugh better, harder, and easier than anyone else. She was everyone's best audience. That laugh, you all know it. There was the giggle, and then a few snorts, and at some point she would double over just gasping for air. She'd have tears in her eyes, and when she could finally get the words out, she'd tell you she was probably going to pee her pants. So many things die did better than anyone else. Light, live, love, laugh. And one more L word. She was always, always late for dinner. 
As you know, the Rockin' K was Di's glory land. It was the culmination of a dream. It was where everything she loved most, cause, her family, the horses, not necessarily in that order, could all come together in one place. It was her sanctuary where she went for peace and joy. And for the love, you could not get her out of that barn. She'd say she had chores to do, but long after the horses were fed, the stalls were mucked, and everything put away, she'd be wandering around the barn doing one last thing. When Kaz and Di discovered BlackRock, they invited us out to their first member member. And if I wanted to spend any time with Di, I had to get up on a horse. It wasn't long before I became an accessory to being late for dinner. The chores were done, but there was always one last thing she needed to do. That never changed. Everybody in here can probably recall a time, or 10, when Kazi would be at the pool bar for Friday night happy hour, red solo cup in hand, waiting for Di to come in from the ranch. Eventually, in she'd walk, sometimes still in jeans and boots with a straw or two of, t of hay still in her hair, looking drop-dead gorgeous. She'd give that little shake of her hair and dance in saying, hi everybody, hi everybody. When Woody and I lived at the Rock and K one summer, the routine was supposed to be happy hour on the deck, followed by dinner at seven. Well, seven inevitably turned into eight, and eight turned into nine. The chores were done, but there were just a few more things she wanted to do. The opportunity to live her last days at her glory land was just one more God wink in Diane's long list of God winks. And I'm convinced that that, along with her amazing positivity and deep faith, kept her going longer than any medical journal said she should. You know, like David said, a person's true colors are shown in the tough times, and at her core, Di was beautiful. She faced a daunting enemy with undaunted courage and grit and grace, all the words that, that you've heard today. Those were her true, beautiful colors. I can only describe this last chapter, her last 34 and a half months, as beautifully hard. Beautiful because she was surrounded with so much love, her family and friends by her side. Beautiful because this amazing Black Rock community, the barn girls, friends from afar showing up to drive her to appointments, send messages, bring meals. Beautiful because Diane never missed an opportunity to let you know how she felt about you. Beautiful because nothing was left unsaid. But of course it was hard. Hard to know that we had to say goodbye. Hard because she, out of all of us, didn't deserve the hand that she was dealt. But she fought the hard fight beautifully. She had said about her battle that it wasn't between life or death. It was between life or glory. She knew where she was going, and yet, in true form, Di hung around her glory land long after her chores on earth were done. Heaven held dinner for her. But this time, it wasn't a simple dinner that was waiting for Di. It was a feast unlike any of us can imagine, in the true glory land, where there's no sadness or sickness, and I would imagine no strict dinner schedule. I can only imagine that entrance into heaven. Maybe she paused before entering, fluff up, fluffed up her hair, and then danced in saying, hey, everybody, hey, everybody. And I'm pretty sure that the first words that she heard were, well done, good and faithful servant. I miss her. You do too. So how can we honor her beautiful legacy? Well, for starters, maybe shine our light a little more brightly. Live life more fully. Love each other more fearlessly. And laugh more easily. What if we all tried to be more like our favorite thing about her? Wouldn't that make the world a better place? I invite you to stand again as you are able. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Diane knew Jesus as the way. She accepted God's grace as the truth, and she lived her life sharing God's grace with others. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for Diane's presence in each of our lives. She lived her life in faith. She finished her course 
she kept the faith. And she showed each of us how love and grace can be shared with family, friends, co-workers, and animals too. Her memory is a prominent part of our lives. May we release any regrets and enjoy just the very best of our times with her. And hear us now as we pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We've spent a fair amount of time talking about Diane, and that is the purpose of a memorial service like this. But I'd like to spend the last few minutes that I'm talking with you, talking to you and for you. Because when someone as important as die in each of our lives dies, it's like a hand grenade that blows a hole in our emotional life. It's gone. It'll never be back. What I've discovered in my 49 years of ministry was that there were two ways people tended to grieve. Unhealthy was the first way. And I know unhealthy when I see it because I lived it when my father died at age 62, nine days into his early retirement. I was angry. Why didn't he take better care of himself? He died of a heart attack. I was disappointed he wasn't going to see my career unfold as a 24-year-old young pastor. He would never meet his future daughter-in-law or his four grandchildren. And I felt that anger and I felt that bitterness inside, but there was a part of me that says, well, I have to be strong. I'm a seminary graduate. I can't let my colleagues think that I'm weak. I have to make sure that I'm not sharing my emotions. Because if I do that, then people will think I'm weak. That's unhealthy. The second way people can grieve is healthy. And healthy is to acknowledge the hole that has been blown up in our emotional lives. And I think our speakers today have done a fantastic job of describing that hole. Unhealthy, we just walk around the hole. We never deal with our feelings or what's going on, and a year from now will be no different. But if we do the work of grief, and I call it work because it's not fun, but the work of grief is to be honest with what we're feeling when we feel it. What does that look like? That means that when we feel like crying, we cry. I have to admit that my father, when I was driving along sometimes, I realized that grief comes in waves. I'd be totally fine one moment, and then a sight, a sound, a song on the radio, a smell, and I'd think of my dad, and I'd burst into tears, and I'd think, am I going crazy? No. My emotions were being honest with me. And they're letting me know that I needed to process this. Healthy grief when we allow ourselves to own it. And the best way to own the grief is to name the feeling when we feel it. So there may be times in the days ahead when you're going to be walking by a barn or seeing a horse running through a field and suddenly you'll think of Diane and you'll have a wave of emotion. Don't stuff it. Let it come out. And as we let it come out, what happens is the waves get further and further apart. And eventually the waves will be, because what's happening is when we do the work of grief, each day is a step away from the hole. And in time, in perspective, the hole will seem smaller. It's important to remember, though, the hole never changes size. To this very day, my dad died decades ago. But if I go back to the cemetery, as I do every year, and clean the graves, 
It is something that if I sit there long enough, I can get in touch with the sadness and the grief that I feel these decades later. It's okay. That's the way we get better. So, days go on. I've also discovered that the grieving process, we all grieve differently. So don't project your way onto somebody else. They should be crying more, or they shouldn't be crying at all. No, you grieve the way you grieve, I'll grieve the way I grieve. But we give each other permission to be grieving. The other thing that's important is it's going to take a year to go through all the places and times where we had that person in the past. So this fall, we'll have the first Thanksgiving without die. It'll be the first Christmas. It'll be a first birthday. It'll be a first anniversary. It'll be the first Easter. And all of those, you can expect a wave to come in again. And give yourself permission to feel it. And what's really amazing is when somebody says, how are you doing? What are you thinking about, Di? Today I'm sad. I'm really sad. Somebody else may say, oh, today I'm feeling fine. That's okay, too. What's helpful for each one of us is to allow the waves of grief to take their place, to take their time. And as you allow those waves of grace to go through and grief God's grace will be there to fill it in. So I thank you for being a part of the service today. I hope you'll take something from this message to the bereaved that's applicable to you. And I encourage you to do the work of grief. And as you do that work, you will heal. Thanks be to God. And now we'll have the special technological benediction.
together the video. This concludes the celebration of life for Diane. You're invited to stay around and share your stories, share your grief, share your laughter, share your fun. Um, we're delighted that you were here today and we praise God for Diane's life and we thank you for sharing this time with us. Thank you to each of the speakers. Thank you to the staff here at Black Rock for providing an amazing environment in which to have this celebration. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We are done.